Your healthcare providers may have discussed the option of genetic carrier screening with you. The purpose of genetic carrier screening is to determine if a reproductive couple may be at increased risk of having a child affected with a genetic condition. Overview of genetics. Our bodies are made up of billions of cells. Inside each of our cells are chromosomes which contain our genetic material called DNA. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes, half we inherit from our mother and the other half from our father. Our chromosomes contain smaller units of DNA called genes, which are made up of a string of letters that act as instructions for how our bodies grow, develop, and function. You can imagine, if there was a spelling change in an instruction manual, it could make things difficult to understand. This testing has allowed us to check for spelling changes in your DNA that would cause a gene to stop working. These types of spelling changes are often called pathogenic variants or likely pathogenic variants. Autosomal recessive inheritance. We have two copies of most of the genes in our bodies, one from our mother and the other from our father. Most of the conditions on the carrier screening panel are inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. A person with an autosomal recessive condition has two non-working copies of a gene. If a person has only one non-working copy of an autosomal recessive gene, they are called carriers of the condition. Since they have a working backup copy, carriers are usually unaffected. However, if both reproductive partners are carriers for the same autosomal recessive condition, they are at increased risk of having a child with that particular condition because their child could inherit both non-working copies of that gene and not have any backup copies. In each pregnancy, reproductive partners who are both carriers of the same genetic condition have a 25% or 1 in 4 chance to pass on their non-working copy of the gene and have an affected child. A carrier couple also has a 50% or 1 in 2 chance of having a child who is a carrier, like themselves, and a 25% chance of having a child that is not a carrier or affected. X-linked inheritance. There are also X-linked conditions included on the carrier screening panel, which are related to DNA changes in genes that are located on the X chromosome. Females typically have two X chromosomes, so if they have a pathogenic or likely pathogenic variant in a gene carried on their X chromosome, they have a backup copy of this gene to perform the gene's function in the body. Males typically have one X chromosome from their mother and one Y chromosome from their father. Since men typically only have one X chromosome, they have no backup copy if they inherit a pathogenic or likely pathogenic variant in a gene carried on their X chromosome from their mother. Therefore, they are more likely to be affected with the associated genetic condition. For a female carrier of X-linked condition, the risk of having an affected child depends on the sex of the fetus. If the fetus is female, there is a 50% chance of being a carrier. If the fetus is male, there is a 50% chance of being affected and a 50% chance of not carrying the gene with a pathogenic or likely pathogenic variant and therefore being unaffected. Autosomal dominant inheritance. A person with an autosomal dominant condition has only one non-working copy of a gene and therefore is considered to be affected. In each pregnancy, individuals who are affected with autosomal dominant conditions have a 50% or 1 in 2 chance to pass on their non-working copy of the gene and have an affected child. They also have a 50% or 1 in 2 chance of passing on their working copy of the gene and having a child who is not affected with the condition. Conditions inherited in an autosomal dominant manner are not typically included on carrier screening panels. The intent of carrier screening is to identify individuals who are at risk of passing a condition onto their child, but who do not show symptoms of that condition. A few autosomal recessive conditions that are run for carrier screening purposes include specific changes in the gene that would have a dominant effect. Possible outcomes of genetic carrier screening. You can learn that you are a carrier for a genetic condition. It is common to be a carrier for multiple genetic conditions. About 80% of individuals who have an expanded carrier screening panel will come back as a carrier. Most of the time being a carrier for a condition is not concerning for an individual's well-being as carriers are generally healthy. 
If you are found to be a carrier for a genetic condition, testing your reproductive partner or sperm or egg donor may be recommended. Results may have implications for your own health. You may learn that you are affected with a condition that has mild symptoms or a late onset. For example, women who are carriers of the X-linked condition, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, may have symptoms of heart disease. In rare cases, carriers may exhibit clinical symptoms. For example, some carriers of Gaucher disease may develop Parkinson's disease later in life. Even more rarely, carriers of certain conditions can have an increased risk for certain types of cancers. For example, carriers of a condition called ataxia telangiectasia may have a moderately increased risk for breast cancer and possibly other cancers. Results may have implications for your family members. If you are a carrier, there is a 50% chance that any of your first-degree relatives, such as your siblings, are also carriers. Carrier screening is risk-reducing, not risk-eliminating. This is due to limitations in technology and our knowledge about genetic variants that cause disease. This changes over time. Reproductive options. If you and your partner are identified to be at increased risk of having a child with a genetic condition, there are different reproductive options available to you. If you're currently pregnant, an option is to have diagnostic genetic testing during pregnancy, either a chorionic villus sampling, CVS, or an amniocentesis to test the pregnancy for the condition. A CVS is performed at the end of the first trimester, and an amniocentesis is performed at the beginning of the second trimester. If you're not currently pregnant, an option is to pursue in vitro fertilization, IVF, with pre-implantation genetic testing. This is a procedure that tests embryos created through IVF for the condition before transferring into the uterus of the woman. Other options include egg or sperm donation, as well as adoption. You may also move forward without any additional testing. After delivery, diagnostic testing may be available. Next steps. Semaphore has a billing team to help work with your insurance on financial coverage. If your claim is not accepted or you do not have insurance, we do have comparable cash pay prices. You should expect results in two to three weeks from when your testing began. Your results will be sent to your ordering provider. If instructed by your doctor, our genetic counseling team may reach out to you by phone with your results. Otherwise, your physician's office will disclose your results to you. If you include your email address with your test order, you will be invited to sign up for our patient portal where you will have access to your results. Genetics is an evolving field, and we learn more over time. It is important to discuss updates to genetic carrier screening with your healthcare providers. You may wish to check back in with your ordering provider with every new pregnancy to have your carrier screening updated or reanalyzed as variant classifications change over time.